Recently, I acquired a used new WH032-42 Furman inverter generator. Uh, the reason I traded out for it was because it's dual fuel. And what we're going to do today is take off the service panel, four fasteners. You're going to need a Phillips number three to remove that. And we're going to drain the gas because unfortunately it came with gas. And all I want to do is run propane on it. I know that the carburetor is here and it gets fed from a hose that comes off the back end. So the machine's actually kind of leaning down and over to that side. So all the fuel goes that way. And basically what I'm going to do is just starve the engine of gasoline. And to help with that, I've drained as much gas as I can out of the tank. And then once it finishes burning off the gas, there is a plastic hose underneath the carburetor. And you can just actually pull on it. It's a clear tube. And you'll discover that it, it's just open at the end. But at the top of this tube is a little screw at the bottom of the carburetor. And you'll open that and that'll actually drain whatever fuel is left in the carburetor out. So we'll do that after we finish starving the generator from fuel. We go through our standard startup procedure. Make sure that it's switched over to gasoline. We oh, put it in the ready position which is the middle position, and then hold the battery down for about three seconds. Give it a little bit of choke and push the starter button. And now we just allow it to run out of gasoline. And there you have it. The tank should be empty. And now we're gonna just allow the engine to cool off a little bit. Make sure that you uh, switch off fuel back to LP and that you hit the off switch on the unit. We'll give it a few minutes to cool off and then we'll go over on the other side and drain the carburetor. One additional step that I take is I remove the gas cap and I let the gasoline tank just air dry out in an open space away from dirt and grime and people because after all the vapors coming off of this are flammable. Here's a close-up shot of the carburetor itself and this is the hose that you're going to be looking for. It's on the right side of the carburetor and it just goes to the back of the unit and if you fish it out you'll see that it's just an open tube. We're going to put a container to catch any fuel that comes out. We're going to use a Phillips number two. Come in a slight angle. Open that up. And there's a little bit of flow. Not much there. So we did a pretty good job. Of. Uh, burning up all the fuel. There's just maybe I don't know. There's. A few drops. And that's what we want. What you don't want to do is. You don't want to leave fuel in the bowl. Because over time that'll gum up. Uh, heavens forbid I should need to go back to using gasoline, I'd want this to just start right up and operate once it's primed with fuel. And if you leave old gasoline in there, then you're going to foul up the jets uh, and it's just going to create issues for you. That's all the gas we got out of it. But that's enough gasoline to cause issues with this generator should you leave it in there. Once you're done draining, don't forget to close off this valve here that allows you to bleed out 
a bowl and then take this hose and just shove it back down in there so it's out of the way with the generator free of gasoline I'll put the service cover back on and then we can attach our propane and we can use this strictly as a propane unit obviously you don't have to make this a propane only use you can actually have gasoline in it and plug in propane and just switch between the two as you need it let's say you start out with gasoline and you run out of gasoline then you switch over to propane by simply turning the knob on the control side I just got in my two 20 pound Flame King propane canisters I paid a little extra for these because they come with gauges now some propane tanks come with gauges that you can attach here on the outlet side but those only measure pressure whereas this one actually measures level how so well inside the tank there's a a level that rises and falls with the amount of liquid propane and there's a magnet attached to that level so as it comes up and down the magnet moves and this gauge senses where that magnet is and thereby deflects accordingly so supposedly a bit more accurate than just measuring pressure because you're actually measuring the liquid that is in the tank these come uh, these are flame king I got these through Home Depot they shipped them out to me um, you get them purged already so the tank doesn't have to be purged which can sometimes cost you extra and uh, they come of course empty because they have to be filled up at a facility that uh, sells propane so that's our next stop notice the safety equipment that's provided but is not being utilized they measure fuel here by gallons although they do have a scale that I guess they check against 8.9 gallons later we had two full tanks first thing we do is remove the cover off the valve making sure the valve is closed we grab the propane regulator and the valve that came with your unit we then connect our regulator to the valve and this is hand tight there's no need for a wrench you should feel a positive stop and that's it we go over to the other end at the Furman we have a cap that we remove and this is a snap-on connection so we bring ours and there should be a cap on yours plus a piece of wire and we're gonna take the cap off we're going to pull this connection here and this actually plugs into here and what that does is it operates the solenoid on the regulator then you push down on the ring push in and it locks into place and we are good to go at this end okay now we open the valve but this is where people make mistakes they open it really quick and there's a regulator in here and it will limit the flow if it detects too much gas coming in at once so what you want to do is just slowly start so you don't trigger it and then open it up all the way if you accidentally do trigger it then turn it off allow it to bleed out and it should reset we now go through our startup procedure we make sure that fuel selector is set to LPG we have our connection we set the switch to run mode which is the center position we press the battery button for three seconds and you may have heard a click and that's the solenoid on the regulator that's opening so that fuel can go into the generator we release that button and now we push start oops forgot choke and now we're running on gas we allow the generator to warm up it's a bit chilly day so I'll give it about a minute or so before we actually will plug something into it
After the generator is warmed up, we pull the cover, plug in our receptacle. And turn on the hair dryer. We should detect a change in speed. Ah, but maybe the this needs to be reset. Let's try it again. And by the way, we are in the eco mode, which allows the unit to throttle down when there's not a heavy draw on it, and it will automatically throttle back up when a load like this comes on. Of course, you could always leave it in the off mode, and then you'll hear the difference. And now it's just running at that full output all the time. We opt for the eco mode because it just saves fuel. When you're done, turn off the electrical devices, disconnect all electrical devices, allow the unit to cool down or stabilize for about a minute or so, and then we'll turn it off. When you go to turn off the unit, it's important that you turn off power here because that controls the solenoid. So it'll shut the solenoid for you. Otherwise, if you try closing the valve, it won't be able to do that. At this point, it's safe for us to come in here and close down the valve from the tank. And then don't store it this way. You should always disconnect the regulator and put that away. We turn the knuckle and you may hear some gas escape. Make sure you put your cover back on to keep garbage and moisture from getting in there. Now we unplug our power that controls the solenoid. We press on the coupler. It disengages. We cap the connector for both electrical and gas. We put our little cap on our valve here. And now you can clamp this to the machine itself. And that makes it just easier when you put everything away and there's even a nice place to hold the handle. Some of the advantages of going propane only is your fuel never goes bad. You don't need a fuel stabilizer. It's actually easier and safer to store propane carburetor is never going to gum up and when you have to switch fuels with a hot generator it's a lot easier to just swap the hoses on propane tanks than it is to pour gasoline into a generator that's still very hot. You actually should allow it to cool down a bit before adding fuel. The downside of course is that a propane generator will output lower power than a gasoline. In our case we lose 200 watts of output. For us, that decrease of 200 watts is more than offset by the safety factor and the convenience of using propane. If you found this video interesting or useful, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, join the subscription team, and as always, thank you ever so much for watching.